What's going on family? It's your man Mami Patron here for another video and like always coming to you from beautiful Medellin, Colombia. So in this video what I'm going to be sharing with you is the cost of living here in Colombia. So for those of you that don't know I've lived here for over three months all right and so i pretty much got the hang of you know the cost of living here so i'm going to be breaking down a couple things for you for example the cost of groceries the cost of an apartment i'll show you i'll give you an example of my apartment you know what it looks like how much i'm paying for it, the amenities the transportation different stuff like that so i think the best way to go ahead and get started with this is to go actually grocery shopping so it's been a couple weeks it's been grocery shopping i'm going to go to the local market called exitone and we're gonna pick up some groceries today and I'm gonna be showing you the prices, how much I pay uh, in versus US dollars and what I get, the cost of it. I'm also gonna be showing you the cost of the Uber to get there. So the cost of transportation, the cost of groceries, and then when I get back, I'll show you guys my apartment and how much I'm paying for it. All right guys, so let's hop over, let's call the Uber and I'll show you the price with you. Okay, so the first thing is transportation. So there is Uber out here, which is awesome. And quite honestly, I haven't taken any of the taxis or anything like that because I heard a lot of bad stories and my Spanish isn't the best and I don't really know the city. So it's just, Uber is just way more convenient for me because I could put it in a location. So if a friend gives me an address or I know a particular place I'm going to, I could just put the, the address in the GPS uh, and the guy takes me straight there. We don't have to talk <laughs> if we don't want to, but I like to talk to the guy and learn some Spanish, but Uber, it does work out here. Now the thing is Uber is, even though Uber is here, it is not legal. So you're typically when you get an Uber, he's going to have you sit in the front seat because if you sit in the back seat, it is suspicious and there is a higher chance for you guys to get pulled over. So typically when you do take an Uber here, even though it's easy to get an Uber almost anywhere here in the city, he is going to have you sit up in the front. Uh, super simple. Now, let me go ahead and go over the prices. It is super economical. Like, let me tell you guys, like right now I'm about to go over to Exito, which is the local grocery store. It's about a 10 minute Uber drive. And I just checked the price. It is about 6,500 pesos. So if you use the conversion, it's about $1.90, okay, for my Uber to take me over to the grocery store there and back. Now, um, that's that's kind of like, that's super awesome. Now, let's just say you're, um, I, I want to go to Parqueyeres, which is like the, the main part of the, of the city. Um, it's about a 15 minute drive. It's uh, yeah, 15 minute drive. And once again, it's about 10,000 pesos, which is about $3. So the average Uber ride is gonna be anywhere from $2 up to $4. You're not gonna really spend a lot of money when it comes to um, the Ubers. That's one of the like my least expenses here. So you never have to really worry about, you know, putting a lot of money, it gets charged on your card. You can also pay cash here if you want. You can pay cash, put it on your card either way. But transportation is super cheap from two to four dollars. You don't have to worry about it, okay? So I'm gonna call the Uber right now. We're gonna head over to Exito. I'm gonna pick up some groceries. I'll tell you what I get, how much the cost is, how much I spend in US dollars, and then we'll bring it back. Okay? What's going on, guys? Just got in the Uber, super excited. And what's your name? Como te llamas? Edison. Edison. I'm here with Edison. For... Hola. Hola. <laughs> yeah, loving it, guys. So we're gonna head over there. Um, maybe you guys give you a quick little visuals. One of the weirdest things when I got here was like the cars. People drive here so crazy. So uh, let me get some visuals. Uh Alrighty, so I just got dropped off. It's literally like a five minute ride. Honestly, I don't really, cause I live high up in the mountains. I don't really walk anywhere. I typically take the Uber, especially when I got here cause I was scared to walk anywhere. Like, like right now I'm walking around with my phone. I would have never done this when I first got here because it was so full of fear. But now I'm here, I feel more comfortable. You can have your phone out, have your jewelry out, whatever. But anyways, just got dropped off. Um, we're gonna go head inside, maybe spot some beautiful girls. I, every time I go out, I always get numbers, I always meet young, beautiful ladies. So let's go ahead and let's get it going. You're gonna see a lot of your bigger local chains here. For example, we got, we got a McDonald's here, um, Burger King, different stuff like that. So before we get started, I'm actually a little bit hungry. So we're gonna get some food really quick. Um, I'm gonna show you the prices so you can see what the average meal is. So at the mall, it's typically the same kind of restaurants. So I'll show you what kind of restaurants are there, the prices, what I decide to get. So you can see here, we actually have a Subway. So you have, like I said, you have the McDonald's, you have the Subways, the Burger King's a big major you know, franchises like that. But you also have some local um, small franchises like places called Frisbees and a lot of other places like that. So let's go check it out. Let's see what we're gonna order and I'll give you some prices. I 
I decided to eat at a little bit of an upper restaurant. You know, there's a lot of families up in here. I would say, I wouldn't say like a fast food chain, but something closer to like, you know, an Applebee's or something like that. So it's a little Mexican restaurant. I paid about $24,000 for this meal, which is, I'll put the little conversion somewhere right here, okay? But anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wait for the food to get here. Okay, so the food just got here, so I got a fajita, so check this out. Okay, so I just got done eating. It came out to about 30,000 pesos, which is just under $9. So you saw I got a whole fajita meal, I got a whole drink, and like chips, you know, guac, the whole, the whole nine yards for under $9. And that was a little bit of a medium-sized restaurant. It wasn't like your local fast food chain because that tip meal typically goes for like 3 to $4. That one was a little bit, you know, like I said, like an Applebee's, like an Olive Garden kind of like middle middle kind of thing. But for less than $9, that's a pretty good meal. So let's hop over to Exito and look at the groceries. So now we're inside of the Exito here. So Exito, Exito, huh? is similar to like a Walmart in the United States, okay? So you can see here you have your baby, you have your clothes, and if you go down this way, you have your toiletries, your food, your grocery store, you know, your groceries, all that kind of good stuff down there. So I highly recommend if you're staying here long-term to shop at Exito. Now there is another grocery store called Corullas, Coru Corullas, something like that. It's green. Now it's it's similar to like a Ralph's, a Kroger's, a Vons, uh or a um what the heck is it called Publix for those of you in Miami it's something similar to that it's like a it's a it's a chain grocery store your price is gonna be a lot more expensive for example the first day I went there I because I didn't know any of the grocery stores here I went to Carrillo and I got maybe groceries for a week and I was spending almost like sixty dollars where here which is like similar you know here at Exito which is similar to like the Walmart sixty dollars lasts me at least two to two and a half weeks worth of food so I highly recommend if you stay here long term or any kind of shopping I highly recommend you come to Exito, but if you're looking for a higher quality, like, you know, vegetables and like more produce, stuff like that, Gurullo would be your brand. So let's hop over to the groceries and get some food. But for those of you that don't know, any American brand or, or typical brands that you see in America are gonna be way more expensive here. Now, I didn't know that or realize that until I got here. So that's just a quick little tip. For example, here we have Nutella, right? So Nutella here, it is about, um, 17,000 pesos but if you look at the off brand which is like the Colum not off brand but like the Colombia brand it is only 11,000 pesos okay so any typical like American brand like uh, like Heinz ketchup anything that's you know from America you're gonna pay a pretty penny here almost I would say like 20% 30% more to get it here so typically I just buy the Colombia brand it's still the same thing but that's just a quick little note here when you are shopping so I went ahead and started off by getting some breads. I eat a lot of, you know, burgers and stuff like that. So here's the, you know, Exito brand of buns. Uh, it's a little under 2,000 pesos for this. And then I also got some tortillas. I think this is the Bimbo, a Bimbo brand, right? So we got these here. And I got these for, I think, about 7,000 pesos. So the next stop is we're going to be getting some coffee. Go ahead and get me a little... Uh, I don't even know what this is, like an instant kind of coffee. Mix it with some water in the morning. Now this is gonna go for about 3,000 pesos. By far one of the weirdest things here in Colombia is their milk. So if you're in America, traditionally you're gonna see your milk inside. Oh, that shit scared me right there. <laughs> so traditionally you're gonna see your milk inside of the, the, you know, the refrigerator section here, but not here in Colombia. As you see all of this right here, this is actually all of their milk. Their milk actually sits on grocery shelves inside of these little cartons. Now, it, you might be thinking, does it spoil? I don't really know. It does have a weird flavor, um, it, but it, it gets you by. Typically, I, I like my milk cold, so I'll buy this little carton. As you can see, it's about 3,500 pesos. I'll buy a little carton like this, so they come in little bags. So it's either the milk, your milk is either gonna come in a little bag like this, or a carton. So that's the weirdest thing. Put in the refrigerator, you really won't tell the difference, but it is not like, a, it's not the same as America, but that is just like a little queer, weird quirk about the milk here. So another weird quirk about the flavors here in Medellin is everything's sweet. Like for example, the barbecue sauces, the ketchups, the different stuff like that are really sweet. So the Heinz brand of ketchup is about 25,000 pesos. But if you come here and I actually grab um, a similar size um, salsa de tomate or ketchup, it's about 2,500 pesos. So we're gonna go ahead, because I love ketchup, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the cart. So next step is let's go ahead and get some eggs. 
We're gonna go get um, two cartons of eggs for 5,800. So we can go ahead and grab some salt for about a thousand pesos, okay? So let's throw that in the cart. And then also we got some seasonings here. So one thing that isn't as ex um, that isn't the cheapest is seasonings, okay? So for seasonings, we're gonna go ahead with this brand here. It's about 9,000 pesos. Uh, so we'll go ahead and throw that in here. And got me a little bag of sugar. It's about 1,500 pesos or so. This will last me about, about a month or so for my coffee. But you have different sizes, but this is the smallest bag, 1,500. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw that in there as well. So typically juices are gonna come inside like a little cart like this. Um, you have anything from like blackberry juice. This right here is orange juice. This one's about 3,600 pesos. So really inexpensive. It's about a dollar or so for a pretty decent. Okay, so we're coming into the final stretch here, which is our meat and our dairy. So I'm leaving, I'm only here for another three weeks, so I'm not getting too much food. So that's why you're not seeing me, seeing me get a lot of stuff. I'm making this video just documenting what I'm getting. But we have some carne asada here, which is about, you can see the pretty decent size here. Uh, typically when I buy this, it's, it lasts me about three days when I cook it. So it's a pretty good, you know, pretty good size. That's about 14,000 pesos. So that's like pretty, what was that, like $3, three, four dollars? Yeah, about three, about four dollars or something like that. And that's a pretty good deal. So you think about you get how much is that? Man, I don't know how to read, you know, kilograms yet. But that's a pretty decent size. So for about five, four dollars, you get enough meat to last. You know, if you're a single person, for about two to three days of food, eating tacos and stuff like that. So that's for carne asada. So let's look at the ground beef. So I went ahead and settled with some ground beef. So it's about this size. I would say like maybe like a pound, something like that. It's about seventy-five hundred pesos. And then the last one here, it's about the same size, a little bit bigger about 9,000 pesos so I'll go ahead and put some conversions here because at the time of this video I don't know about the you know kilogram to pound um, ratio but you see it's a decent size for a decent price you know just a dollar a couple two you know two two three dollars so let's go ahead and look at the chicken now to finish it off here in the meat section we did get a couple pieces of chicken you can see here the price is about 8,700 for this one and about another 8,700 for this looks like some skinless chicken breast that we got right here all right so let's go ahead and throw that in so for two so that's uh what is that eight pieces of chicken breast for about 16,000 pesos, which is, you know, about $5 or so. So I couldn't forget a bottle of wine. So I'm actually not really a wine drinker. Usually when I have girls come over, um, you know, I offer them some wine. So this is about 9,000 pesos, about $2.50. Tastes pretty good, gets the job done, but pretty decent, you know, two, two, $2.50 for a bottle of wine. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some bananas. It's about a thousand pesos, not too expensive. We went ahead and finished up. So there was a couple things I added that I didn't get on camera. For example, those juices, I added two extra juices. So there was a total of three juices and I bought about, I'd say like a pound and a half, two pounds of pork because we're having a barbecue tomorrow. But in total, it ended up coming out to, out to a total of 161 thousand pesos which is just shy of $50 it's about $47 or so so this food will last me about the next two weeks you know I do eat out and stuff like that but that's just the uh, the cost of eating out or eating the groceries here see for wasn't that for less than $50 I have enough food now for the next two weeks which is super exciting all right guys so let's hop back in I just called my uber my uber back is about another two dollars or so and now the last thing I want to show you is my apartment here so I am in Las Palmas which is a uh, which is about an eight minute drive from uh, Parque Lleres or Poblado. It's a little bit in the mountainside. And one of the reasons I chose this location was because of the amazing view. Now here, I do have a two bedroom apartment, uh, two bedroom, two bath, even though I live by myself. But when the guy told me how much the price was, it was just super economical. I'm paying $560 US for this apartment. So you can see it, and it has a nice view, you know, the, uh, basic kitchen, you know, basic kitchen, dining room, it has a little living room so it's a nice little, it's a nice little you know touch for 560 dollars us now think about it if you had a one bedroom it would drop down even more probably somewhere closer to in the 400 dollar range or something like that maybe you know 450 but i think i got a good price even though it is two bedroom the view is amazing it's just something that's okay guys i hope you got a lot of value from this video so i showed you basically how much it costs to, the cost of living here i showed you going going out to eat all that kind of good stuff. So if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe below because I'm going to be talking a lot more about the cost of living and anything digital nomad traveling. So for those of you that want to start a business online and make that leap into the digital nomad space, they're going to be going all over all different parts of the world doing stuff like this, cost of living, best hostels, best cafes, and everything like that. And also teaching people how to become a digital nomad by starting an online business. So make sure you subscribe below. Miami Patron out.